All right, this one is super duper for the nerds, but a friend of mine is a teacher. One of her students asked her about this. She asked me, and I thought this is actually a really good question. When you look at a Saturn V rocket, why do we see the S1C stage, the S2, and then the S4B? Why is there no S3 stage? Well, the answer is way more complicated than you would expect. So this actually goes all the way back to the Saturn's early development when it was still at the Army Ballistic Missile Association under Wonderf and Brown before they joined NASA in the late 1950s. At the time, the Saturn family was under development and it had three versions, the Saturn A, the Saturn B, and the Saturn C. The A version was the smallest. It used some stages that the team was developing mixed with other stages from existing rockets. The B was a little bit larger, same deal. The C was starting to get into a really big heavy lift rocket. It had a C1, C2, C3, C4, and C5 variant. As these rockets got bigger, they also developed more stages. When we talk about staging, basically think about small rockets stacked on top of each other so that the combined power and the combined thrust of all of them firing in sequence is what gives the spacecraft right at the top all of the momentum it leaves to go wherever it needs to go. The C1 version had an S1 stage, then an S4 stage, and then maybe another Centaur stage up top. The C2 had an S1, an S3, an S4, maybe even an S5, so we're getting into a four-stage rocket. The C3, the same thing, an S1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 stage. These rockets were getting bigger, and they were designed to be able to take payload to the moon and to other planets. Then in December of 1959, an evaluation committee decided to entirely drop the A and B versions, leaving it with just Saturn C. NASA took this recommendation and passed it on to Van Brown's team in Huntsville, and it concurred, and decided to actually drop production of the S3 stage. It just wasn't needed anymore. The stages it was developing were proving to be really powerful that we didn't need this extra stage. As the rocket developed and the pressure mounted because there was suddenly a deadline to get to the moon by the end of the decade, the C2 and C3 versions were dropped entirely. The C4 version was briefly considered, but eventually entirely replaced by the C5, which became the Saturn V. What this actually speaks to is the series of compromises that were made on the way to the moon. This rocket family could have been incredible and it could have been in production for decades and had us going into space with much more regularity than we saw in the post-Apollo era. But the pressure to land on the moon and the need to get there by the fastest means possible kind of meant the path of least resistance, and that was the Saturn V. It's really interesting to look back at the engineering and wonder what if if we had done all of the things right off the bat.